everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of One Among with Stephanie. It's your girl, Stephanie Jungle. As promised, I will be bringing you stories from the grassroots, stories of people doing extraordinary things within their community. Stick around. Today, I'm super excited. I'm at number 502 Victoria Street here at North Melbourne City Hair Extension. I'm here to have a chat with Judith, the owner of the salon, so we can talk about all things hair. If you blame life, you blame who give it So don't blame life, blame the way how you live it Father God never sleeping, waking to make mistakes So blame it on the friends and in your surrounding with fake You blame life, you blame who give it So don't blame life, blame the way how you live it Father God never sleeping, waking to make mistakes So blame it on your friends and in your surrounding with fake Who know best the best, cause we surpass best Enough of them the time to be perfect they say a woman's hair is her crown of glory, which is why hair is an important aspect of female culture. Hair is so important in the sense that we spend significant amounts of money and time on our hair. Today I'm at 502 Victoria Street. I'm here to have a chat with Judith. She is one woman who knows what is trending. She's had over 15 years experience in the hair industry, the hair business. She's one woman who knows what is trending and who knows what every woman should have on their crown, be you white or black. Stick around as I introduce the beautiful, fabulous, gorgeous Judith. Don't go anywhere. to Victoria Street here at North Melbourne and I have got the fabulous, fabulous Judith. Like I told you before, she is one lady who knows what is trending and who knows what every woman, every lady should have on their crown, be you white or black. She's got it all covered. Welcome to the show Judith. How are you? I'm good, thanks. thanks Looking thanks. as fabulous as you always do. You never stop to dazzle me with all your outfits. Thank you. How are you? You look beautiful too. Thank you. I'm trying to learn from the best. Oh. <laughs> Amen to that. <laughs> now let's talk about Judith. Who is Judith? Judith, um, I'm from Tanzania. I came to Australia 18 years ago. I came to Australia for studies. And uh, I did study food science and tech. I've got two children. I tried to work in the industry for food science. And it was nine to five and long shifts and too much work juggling with the farm, with the kids. So I decided to change my career because I started doing hair when I was little and everything was self learned So I learned from dolls, I learned from doing my dad's beard, my mom's hair. Every night I would force them. I would just do their hair and they wake up in the morning, they would take it off and go to work. So that's where the interest started. But I never knew I would take this as a career at all. But I just had the interest. So every time friends come over, I will always look at their hair and say it needs to be fixed, so I'll try to fix it and there. So it's been happening for a long, long time. Until like four years ago, and I decided I'm just going to quit my work. Resigned in the middle of, of the afternoon and said, look, I just can't do this anymore. And that was it. I came home and started doing hair. And, and funny enough, after resigning my job, I had the whole fully full week booked. And that was a sign. So I left my career as a food technologist to do to become a hairdresser. Wow, from a food technologist to one of the best hair stylists in Melbourne. That that is that you were quite brave though. Did you ever think, oh my god, why am I doing this? Did any was there any second thoughts? Because you were here in Australia and you'd be thinking of income, yeah. instant income. There was, there was, but the thing is the flexibility and the passion. Like I just love doing hair, so I said, look, the worst could be is probably the money is not going to be enough or whatever, but doing what you love doing is very rewarding. I could do it for free, I could do it 
while sleeping. It's just loving what you do. So that's why what motivated me. I remember thinking about the money issue and I'm like, what happens if I go ahead and open a shop and then I wasn't making enough? And I said, hmm, the worst thing could happen is be just quitting and go back to my house again. So as soon as I was clear and said, oh, well, I, I'm okay with whatever the consequence is going to be, then I was already ready to go and give it a go. That was the number one. That's the number yeah. one break to conquering the fears. That's the yes, way we yes. Mean. Conquering the fears is very, like, if you're okay with the worst scenario that could happen with your decision, then you can just go ahead and say, look, I'm going to do it. It's knowing there will always be the good side about it, but even me, even though there'll be a bad side, then I'll be fine. I'll just try to do something else, or maybe I'll improve, or maybe I'll change. I'll go back to my food science uh, career, or whatever. So that was a bit brave. She she is very brave, very brave. I don't think most people would want to do that after being established in one career. But let's talk about the, the name is quite captivating. City hair. Mm. How, how did you come up with that name? I came up with city hair because I live in the city. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm in North Melbourne, close to the city. I'll probably the farthest I could go is close to the city, Flinders Street, Johnson Street. So the name should be stay around the city because of the fact that my intention is to stay around the area. So it was clear, like, you no, know, there wasn't many people who were doing extensions around the CBD. So I thought, look, if it's city hair extensions and people are traveling or people are coming as, as tourists around the area. So as soon as they know the name, then they know it's, this is close to us, so we don't need to travel that far. So that's how I came up with the name. And my daughter came up with the slogan, here as you like it. And it's true, like people come here with all different designs, they want to do things that, are, they don't even have a description for it, or even the name for it. But we t I try to accommodate each individual and try to improvise. So the best thing, because I love what doing what I do, so I improvise a lot. So most of the things is according to individual needs. So that's how we come up with the name and the slogan. So tell your mates, the, the, whatever you come here and describe to Judith, she's gonna do it for you. So sleep and think of that hairstyle you've been thinking of, and this is the best stylist you can come speak to to do it for you. Now let's talk about how you actually got into the business. I know you've told us how you all started, but how, how did the business, how did it all start? Did you start from home or? I started from home, like since I came to Australia, that's 1997. I still had people coming to my house and they their hair. So he started at home with friends and then, excuse me, friends with our friends and then kept on doing it. And I moved houses, they moved with me. I moved out at least about 10 different suburbs in, in, in Melbourne alone until I came to West Melbourne. So it's been a long journey. Like from houses to houses, and then from moving from one area to another area, and people still come through. I've got clients who have been with me for more than 10 years, and they started with me from my house. So it's just been a journey, and also it's like a, a passion. You have a passion for it, so it's, an, it's a never ending. Kind of. I love the way you always use passion because it says something. Passion makes the world go around. Love only makes it a safer place, with which I think it's, 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 there's so much passion in what you say and so much drive. What would you say is the driving force? The driving force is loving people. I actually love to interact with people and just making them look beautiful. And the most, the least I could, I mean, I could do the hair. That's what I'm passionate about. So if you could actually a girl walks in with really thin hair or hair that doesn't even look nice and you you make that hair look amazing. You see you see the smile on their face. You see how happy they are and you see the gratitude from them. So that's that's the driving force. But besides the money issue and family responsibility because this is my income. Like I do this to support my family. That could be a sec another secondary reason why I'm doing it. But I have to be happy with what I'm doing first. So those factors in combination that you know, like you always wake up, even if you're tired. You wake up, there you go, there's somebody there, you keep on doing it. Yeah. Look, I survived with being a single mom, survived depression, survived raising kids on your own and juggling from one job to another, survived doing a course. I reckon anybody can do it, as long as they have the drive. You know, you have the drive, you have the desire to succeed, so you can do it. There is ups and downs, there's always issues around, but you can always overcome all of that because of the fact that you really want to see the end results. 
I could just sit here and watch her talk. So much, so much wealth of knowledge. And look, she, you, you, she's a very strong, strong woman. Let's talk about your services. Mm -hmm. what, what services the city um, here render? We do offer nearly more than six uh, hair extension applications, and our clients range from um, Caucasian to Africans to across the globe. Everyone comes here to get their hair done. If it comes to extensions or drillers or hair braiding and cornrows, we do all that. So majority of the time we do hair extensions and drillers. Those are the two services that we do offer quite often and that's what we use it with. Yeah. So and I like both of them. So dreadlocks and hair extension. I like dreadlocks, hair extension, cornrows and braiding. Everything. Talking to you, I could feel a lot of, um, I could sense a lot of, I don't know what the right words to use, mm -hmm. but everybody who's run a business, that we would have been ups and downs. Mm -hmm. What has been the hardest aspect of running your own business? Well, the, uh, the hardest probably is me being inexperienced, but then trying to do it my way. Didn't have a cause or anything, but I had to Google everything. I Googled how to start a business. I Googled how to do advertisements. So I've done more of the advertisement on my own. And so if you didn't have enough money to pay somebody, then you have to do it on your own. And then you probably, you may overspend or maybe underspend, or you may try to have a strategy of how you're gonna do with it. And then you do it and you see it's not working. So you look behind and say what I waste, I wasted this and I wasted that. So there's been a difficult in, in terms of organiza organization. And also, not only organizing them, juggling with family as well, so organizing the kids, organizing the family back home, and having your own personal issues, and then you have all of this that is just responsibility coming back off. So it becomes so overwhelming. Sometimes you just, I go to sleep and I'm like, I don't want to really go back to that shop anymore. So it has been a struggle. And some days I'm like, I'm coming here late. I'm like, I'm tired. You know, but then uh, after a little while, then you get motivated again and then you keep on doing it. So it hasn't been like all easy, but it's, it's been a difficult journey. Yeah, a difficult journey in the sense of like you've never done it before and you don't have any mentor, you don't have a business mentor. And even if you do want to have one, you need to pay them to actually mentor you. So having family support is quite crucial for anyone who is starting a business. And if you can't have family support, if you cannot, you're not privileged for it, then if you have enough money to actually get somebody to organize it for you or invest more time doing your own research and see what is best for you and then do it tick by tick, just do it step by step. So that will actually make it easy. Yeah. For so me, I was just out there and I'm saying, you know what, this has to be done. It has to be done. Whether I like it or not, I love doing it, so I, why not? I'll just throw myself out there and do it, and let's see what's going to happen. That was very brave of you, though, because four years ago, there hasn't been... The, the way African sounds are popping up now wasn't that way then, so it wouldn't have been quite a struggle. Yeah. But, but why should anyone watching you right now, why should anyone um, believe in what you're saying or come to your service, um, come to your store for your services? Uh, people should come to my services simply because um, I'm quite very honest with everyone. Like, I will tell you this style is not suitable for you. It's up to you to choose, yeah? But I also, not only that I put extensions, I try to tell people how to maintain their natural hair. If you don't have any hair underneath and you're relying on extension, obviously it's not going to work. So some, I've got people who, they don't care about their hair at all. They're not sure, oh, of course I'm gonna put extensions, so don't worry about what is underneath. That's very wrong. You still have to maintain your hair. So I will go through how to maintain your natural hair, make it more stronger, and what method of extension is suitable for you and how you can minimize the breakage of your natural hair after you have the extensions. So people actually get their hair to grow while putting extensions. So it's not chucking your hair and then, hey, there you go, chucking your hair, chucking extensions and there you go. No, it's about nourishing your natural hair and adding 
extra hair because the more stronger your hair is you could put so much extensions and you look more fabulous so that's the reason why I think people should come to me because of the fact that you will only get the honest truth you're not going to get cheap quality extensions and you're not going to get a cheap service, cheap service which meaning cheap in terms of the quality of it and you're going to go home and then well I have all patches or I have receding hairline because people do just braid you and you know, just do whatever they want. So there's that you're gonna want quick money. Pay extra attention mm -hmm. and extra care. Yes, for. it's one on one kind of a personalized service. So we do I do like to have her person at a certain time and do deal with her person and then make sure they are happy. I don't like rushing people. Yeah, it's like somebody comes in, you know, just do it rushing, rushing and go. No, that's not how I operate. So everyone has to make a booking and therefore we have maximum time to actually get the full benefit of having that experience of wearing extensions and growing their own hair, maintaining their hair, having the, uh, the advice for the aftercare products and their daily routine, what they should do on their hair. That's what I normally do with most of my clients. Personalized service, that's what you get at 502 Victoria Street here at North Melbourne. I have still been having a chat with Judith, the owner of the salon and you have had incredible things about her and about her services. It's up to you to make a decision. If anyone wants to contact you, What's the best way to get in contact with you? Uh, the best way, I'm reachable on Facebook. I've got my mobile contact and I've got Instagram and I've got uh, my website. Uh, and I'm on Google Plus. I'm on all social media, but easily you can SMS me on 0421 or Alternatively, you can drop in at 502 Victoria Street, North Melbourne, Victoria. That's it. You have headed from the house's mouth. Well, we're going to have all those details down below. So if you're looking at getting something just up on your hair, on your crown that must be taken care of, you know the best place to come to. We'll have all those juicy details down below. And for now, it is bye-bye and it has been one and one with Stephanie.